Hello and welcome. Another City Heroes comic book review. This is Blue King Studios issue number four. Uh, so City Heroes volume two, number four, something like that. Here you check this out. See Blue King Studios issue four is from September 04. Uh, I don't know when this issue actually got mailed to people. I wasn't subbed to the game back when this stuff was going on. Dread Carnival part two. Not to be confused with the Dark Carnival. That's an entirely different and much more Detroit-related topic. As you can see the uh, Carnival Shadows here. They wear that like Harlequin pattern. They got face masks. We don't learn a lot of details about the face masks and all that stuff in the story. But we sure see the, the, the Carnies show up and all that stuff. Now we start off with our heroes, quote, interrogating people. <laughs> <laughs> Any time in this game, when the NPCs are like interrogate somebody, what they really mean is street hunt and defeat a bunch of enemies. That is what our heroes are doing right here. This is so true to the game, man. Especially older content. Uh, old content was just rife with this kind of stuff. Uh, if you've ever watched me like stream, and I'm like doing Harvey Naylor's arc or something, you're like, oh my god, there he goes fighting another hundred enemies on the streets of. Of Peregrine Island, yeah. It happens. So they're interrogating them. Talk! Tell me everything you know about Vanessa DeVore. Look at that. Oh, that bubble's killing me, man. I know not who that is. I know no. None of these guys know anything either. Nor as the parties. We sell your stuff. I know this. I don't. I don't know. So she just frees them to the wall. What's a little hypothermia and frostbite among friends? Am I right? So, they go from this, they continue their investigations by horse arranging a meet with an old friend, a colleague. And what do they do? They take the train. This is the most frickin' city heroes thing that is entirely possible. And look, this dude's looking at him, but he's like totally like, oh yeah. Do I recognize him? Nope. Okay, I'm going back to my paper. Like, he is not even really interested. This is like a moment of curiosity that he's been caught in. Oh. Apex is trying to call his sister. This is a plot point. We won't spoil the plot point, but this is a plot point. She's not answering the phone. So he's got personal worries. See, we're doing that thing like Spider-Man comics where you fight the villain and you also have to fight on the home front. Like, Spider-Man's home life, or I guess I should say Peter Parker's home life, was always a mess. We're getting a little glimpse of that here with Apex. He's meant to be that down-on-his-luck, everyman kind of character that we're supposed to be able to relate to. They do a great job in all this stuff of giving these characters depth, like they matter. Like, instantly here, previous page, they beat up uh, some fifth column guys, and they get here. And we're meeting Kayla, and Kayla's like hardcore punk rocker. All these costume parts are in the game, by the way. That haircut, I'm pretty sure is in the game. I don't know about the, the earrings, but the collar is, the jacket is, the tank top, the boots are. Somebody just went into the game, into the character creator, 2004, and made this character, and then gave the refs to an artist. I just do that today. It's amazing what you can do with the character creator in this game. It's still one of the most versatile out there. Other more modern games have done a lot of really great stuff, but they don't typically have the breadth of like parts that you can put. In City Heroes, you can make... Actually, can you make Horace's outfit? You make something darn close to Horace's outfit. You can definitely make Apex's outfit, or which is probably doable, except the hair maybe. Hers is 100%. You know, you can come in there and you can have, like, a ballerina, a grizzled veteran soldier, a guy made of fire. You know, like, you can do all that kind of stuff you see in comic books. Most other games are much more focused on a specific genre. You know? So her idea is, hey, what if we went and stalked the freak show and beat them up because I got a lead, and so we get a great little fight sequence of them beating up some freak show. Who are cyborgs? And you can see, man, these dudes got like, yeah, like, what if I just replaced my arm with a giant metal hook? Like, what is wrong with this guy? 
Come on, harder, you useless freaks. Hit harder. Oh, boy. Meanwhile, Apex, who's just like a like normal human being, is over here martial arting cyborgs. Like, good job, dude. <laughs> Pro-level strats. Um, unlike the previous issue, where we did like low-level, mid-level, high-level enemies, here we've done like mid-level to... Uh, freak show mostly show up in like level 20 to 40. Uh, the ones that show up at higher levels in the old game tended to be uh, like alternate universe freak show, so they don't really count. They beat the freak show up, they get some more intelligence, and then they act on it. And by act on it, I mean they just walk right into Vanessa DeVore, leader of the Carnival of Shadows' is den. Plan? They're going to get uh, Vanessa DeVore and one of her minions to fight each other. And I just like the look. Should have taken the stairs. We're flown up here. Late now. He's just like, ah, crap. We got a little party going on. Here's Vanessa DeVore showing them that, yeah, you know what? I really am like a level 54 archvillain, and uh, y'all are screwed. So from here, uh, conflict, descent, banter, outsmarting the bad guys, all that kind of stuff happens. It's a lot of fun. It was a good, quick read. And I, I got super hooked. I want to go read the next issue, but as you can see, if you look at the lower right screen, I got to get to bed, yo. So, you all check this stuff out, man. CD Heroes is this wonderful world with this huge depth of lore. And there's a lot of really great stuff, really cool stuff in it. The characters are pretty good. They feel more real than a lot of other comic book characters. I was just reading uh, Batman, or I'm sorry, not Batman, Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong stuff. And, like, I realize that's not, like, a key, like, real part of DC's, like, continuity. But the characters in that, to some extent, felt like caricatures of who they're supposed to be. Whereas in these comics, these characters don't feel that way. They feel like they're genuine people. It's a great depth of writing. And Richard Dakin, however you pronounce his name, did a great job with it. Uh, my only complaints, really, when I start looking at this stuff, is the artifacting and the art. Because it's kind of low res. These are small PDFs. And also... Oh, just look at that lettering, man. It's not the worst lettering I've ever seen. And it's certainly better than the first issue, but it ain't the best lettering either, you know? Anyway, you all take care of yourselves. Have a great one. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.